How's it going, guys? In my first video uh, that I ever made, I showed you guys a quick fix to gurgling in vape tanks, okay? Because chances are that, you know, if you're into vaping, you probably own like an EVOD or a T3 or uh, like, like, a, like a Pro Tank or a Pro Tank 2, Pro Tank Mini, something like that, uh, any vape divide, uh, a, you know, and these things all basically use the same coil, which is the Kanger coil, right? On the EVODs, the, the post is slightly shorter, but generally they're all the same coil. Okay, uh, th right. So the issue uh, uh, at the time is that these things, in time after you use it, they start gurgling. Okay, so other than the fix, uh, the gurgling oh, is always going to be coming back, right? So usually the only way to prevent uh, uh, that is to start over with a new coil. So you would just go ahead and then you know pop open from the foil or from uh, wh whatever backup coils that you have, and then you would just put another one in, and then maybe the gurgling will cease. Sometimes even putting in a new coil directly, you know, from Kanger, uh, it's going to start gurgling right away as well. Okay, so I'm going to teach you guys how to build a coil that doesn't gurgle anymore. That just completely fixes the situation. So in a way, this is kind of like my follow-up from my first video of how to fix the gurgling. Now we're going to learn how to basically just stop the gurgling. Also, for those of you who really want to get into rebuilding, there's nothing better than to get into entry-level rebuilding than uh, a Kanger tank. Because uh, when you work with these things, as long as you're not messing around with stainless steel mesh wicks inside, you don't have to deal with the hot spots or anything like that. So it's very entry level. You don't need a lot of tools. Uh, I'll show you the things that I'm going to be using today, and it's just very, very simple. Okay, so let's get into the, the video right now, and sorry for the long introduction. Okay. Oops. All right. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Okay, so with me today, okay, is uh, my Kanger tank and a large nail clipper, a little bit of um, a, a, a little bit of cotton, a little bit of silica, and 32 gauge canthal. The reason why it's 32 gauge canthal is because um, generally the coils that are around like you know 2.2, 2.4, 2.5, they're using 30 gauge canthal at six reps. Okay, so let me just set this aside at first. We're going to take this apart, <clears throat> and um, obviously we all know what this looks like: the base with the coil in uh, inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently unscrew the coil head. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove the large gasket, and I'm going to leave it right here. Okay, then uh, I'm going to actually screw it back into the base, just slightly, all right? Um, where the wicks are is going to be grooves, okay? So what you want to do is that you want to hold down the base of the, uh, uh, the, the base cap and then uh, rock the, uh, the, the pole exactly, you know, in the direction of the grooves, and then it'll come apart very simply, like that. You don't need tweezers or or uh, pliers or anything to fight it back and forth or anything like that as long as you have this you, you have plenty of leverage to get this off all right so this is done and then we'll set this aside because i only threaded this a little bit this is going to come out very easily so now we're going to leave our base plate on the side as well all right um then from the back like every other video we're just going to use our nails and then you know pull the pin out from from inside and then it'll leave the uh, rubber seal over here. So we're going to take this gasket out as well. There we go. I want to do this gently because I don't want to tear it. Okay, there we go. Now it's out. So the leads are over here. You know, uh, the, the old coil, everything is, is, is in here. So we could just go ahead and then rip this out. We don't need it. Let me get rid of this thing. Okay, that's the uh, the old coil. It's all burnt. It's all chewed. You know, no need. All right. So now, what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and uh, cut a little piece of the canthal. Okay. Now, I really recommend everybody get like, a uh, a large um, 
nail clipper like this with uh, the flat head on the top. Don't get the concave ones, okay? Because the flat ones on the top, first of all, it, uh, nail clippers are more accurate. It's sharper. You don't need that much pressure. Just a little bit is good to, you know, cut basically most of your coils. And the flat tops is going to be able to get into places where, you know, sometimes the concave ones aren't going to be able to. So now we're just going to cut off a little piece of canthal like this, all right? And then we're going to take our uh, silica and then we're going to do six reps okay six reps should put us around like 2.4 2.5 2.3 something like that one two three four five six okay now the spacing of the reps that you did on it okay it's some people make a big deal out of it i don't think it's really that big of a deal why because you, you're not wrapping on top of stainless steel or, or anything that where you're going to catch hot spots okay if the coils are slightly touching each other then it's kind of like a micro coil if they're not touching each other then it's just like a regular coil it really doesn't make that much of a difference okay what's important is that like after you put the leads and everything in it's not touching the walls of anything so that that could potentially cause a short so this is what we have over here now this is this part is optional okay for some people they taste the wick of a new silica. For some people, they don't. Okay. In this case, then what you want to do is bring out your torch and then purge it a little bit. Okay. Don't use a regular lighter if you're going to be purging this thing because a regular lighter is just going to make everything black, right? So you you actually you absolutely need a butane torch in order to you know purge this and then make it clean so that there's less of a funky kind of so sil new silica flavor inside. Okay. Now. <clears throat> Here's the difference of how we're going to set up this thing, okay? Um, because the coil itself, after the whole thing is assembled, the whole thing is hollow. It's like a straw underneath. So in order to stop the gurgling, we need a layer of cotton underneath the coil and a layer of cotton above the coil. The layer of cotton above the coil is to prevent juice hot juice, boiling juice, from flying up and stinging you in the tongue. The other um, uh, layer of cotton that's underneath the coil is to prevent juice from getting down into the 510 connection. And since the top and the bottom is both completely stopped, this will eliminate gurgling totally. Now, the catch over here, okay, is to get the right amount of cotton. All right. You don't really need like a large amount of cotton. You you really want a small amount of cotton, all right? Because you just need the cotton to be present. If the cotton is too thick, then it's going to prevent juice from the right amount of juice from getting inside, and it will taste kind of burnt. If um, the 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 cotton is uh, slightly on a thin side, yeah, maybe it'll you'll have some gurgling, but highly unlikely because cotton is something that's highly absorbent, but it doesn't really allow too much leakage, okay? So here's what we're going to do. The coil that I just built over here with the leads, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to twist up a little bit of cotton and I'm going to place it underneath. You see that? Okay, and then what we're going to do is that we're going to take the two leads over here and then place it back into the housing. Two leads back into the housing like so. And then we pull it down. So now what you see over here, okay, is the cotton sitting underneath the silica with the coil. Then what we'll do is take the rest of the cotton that we have up top over here, okay? And then we're going to place it on the top of our coil, all right? Now, <clears throat> this is what we do. In order to hold everything in place, we're going to take the top post and we're going to, the, the, the stem over here, and we're just gonna click it back into place, all right? Now, you've got yourself a hot mess. Okay, but don't worry about that. You need the top post to hold everything into place so that when you put the, the bottom gasket back on, you know, it's it's not going to push your whole assembly back up again. All right, so uh, the rule is one lead inside of, of the gasket and one lead outside of the gasket. Okay, so 
I don't know if I should be calling it like, you know, the rubber thing or the gasket or, or whatever, but, you know, this thing that's in my hand. Okay, so. All right, so one in and one out, like, like so, right? Then we take the pin and then we put this back in, all right? Done. So we cut off the excess leads. See, I have in a, a, a flat nail clipper, so it's very easy for me to, you know, get to the edges that I need. All right. Now we need to trim down the rest of this thing. Okay. So we do not need any more wick than what is protruding from the bottom base plate. Okay. So basically, that is your guide, and that's where I chop. See that? Okay, now let's get the other side. Okay, now we have a nice clean coil. The inside of this thing from the side view, it is sandwiched. It's basically a hybrid wick. So it's cotton, silica, cotton. Okay. Uh, Cotton and silica, they both have different kind of absorbent properties. They both have different kind of vape properties when people va vape on. If you ever had an RDA dripper or anything like that, then, you know, uh, a, a, uh, a cotton cloud and a uh, silica um, uh, soaker setup is going to taste completely different. This way, you're going to get the best of both worlds, okay? So, basically, I didn't use any tools. I didn't use anything like that. We put our rubber ga gasket back on. Okay, and then we spin this back into place. All right, take our pro tank, fill it up with juice, put it back in, let it sit for a while. For those of you who are a little more antsy and uh, you know completely impatient, then we could always pop this off. Okay, and then uh, usually I don't tell people to prime their wicks and stuff, but because this thing is cotton. It wicks very, very easily, so it's definitely not going to have an issue at all. You could go ahead and then, you know, put in one or two drops directly in the middle of this thing. And then put your center post back on. Just snap it into place. All right? And this thing is already primed and ready to go. Fill this thing with juice. Put this back on. Okay. Then put this onto your battery. Normally, people always ask me to go ahead and, uh, you know, put it on a meter and show you guys to, to make sure that there's no shorts. I'll go ahead and do that for you. Um, I don't think it's necessary for to, to do a meter on this one because most of you guys who are, uh, who, who have like a, a VAMO or, or a, uh, an, uh, an SVD or, you know, MVPs, things like that, you basically have something that's going to tell you what the uh, ohm is going to be anyways. So, This thing was clocking in at like 2.1, so we're going to unscrew this thing. And then uh, over here with me, I have an iTaste VV. I'm just going to screw this on top of it. Okay. And then uh, let's take a look. Whoops. Why does it say non? Oh, because this part is too recessed. I didn't screw this thing down enough. There we go. Check your pins at the bottom to make sure that uh, you know it's 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 out there. Sometimes the pin might be a little bit too recessed within the 510 connection, and then you know yeah uh, you, you won't get a reading. So hopefully this time, put this back on. Hit it. Sorry, let me flip it over this way so that you guys can see that the atomizer 2.1 and this thing is ready to fire, okay? So that's it with um, my build of uh, the Kangaroo coil. Uh, I watched other videos, you know, I wanted to make sure that um, this hasn't already been done. Uh, other people have done this with uh, just silica builds and people have done it without the top wick or the bottom wick and things like that. I've tried those things and what happens is that juice will, you know, fly up and sting you in the tongue and that's not very pleasant. Um, 
If you don't have silica as thick as the one that I showed you in this video, then go ahead and use any thinner silica and just, just fold it in half, wrap that one up, put your cotton on top, put one on the bottom. The point of the whole video is to do kind of like a sandwich thing, so you kind of have like a diaper on top and a diaper on the bottom to, to soak everything, and it's not going to have any kind of leakage. So number one, it's not going to gurgle. Number two, it's going to perform like a cotton cloud, okay? So take care, guys, and enjoy your pro tanks now.